Hello everyone and welcome back. So now we're at our first example. What do we have? Well, we have a car and it's traveling along this road. The speed of V equals 2S meters per second, where S is in meters. So the further it goes along the path, the faster it's going. We also know that this distance, this center of curvature is 50 meters and we're considering that to be constant for this curve at least. What we want to know is the magnitude of the car's acceleration at s equals 10 meters. Okay, s equals 10 meters. So, what's your plan? Well, calculate the velocity and then figure out your normal and tangential components using the equations given last time. As always, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try this on your own. However, all I'm going to do is count to three, but magically, you can pause the video, you can try on your own, and you can come on back. So, three, two, one, and you're back. Let's check it and see if you did it right. So first off, the velocity vector in the tangential direction, because its car's velocity is always tangent to its path, um, is given by v equals 2s. So we're going to plug in s equals 10, and we get the velocity at that particular point is 20 meters per second. Now the acceleration vector is going to be equal to the magnitude of my velocity squared over the radius, which we know. Um, and also it's going to have this component where we're seeing how that changes with time. So, hmm, v dot, that's where we're going to have an issue. But maybe, maybe there's some sort of derivative thing we can do to help figure that out. Now, this one is pretty easy. But I really, really want to look at this one right here because this is one that's going to probably confuse you. V dot is equal to dV dt. But we do not know how the velocity changes with time. We only know how the velocity changes with position. But we also know how the position changes with time. Because that would be simply our tangential velocity. So what we do here is we use the chain rule to figure out what you know, to go from what we don't know to something that we do know. So what we know is that this will be the same as dv ds, so how the velocity changes with position, which we know, do know, times ds dt, how the path changes with time, which we know. And so we can then solve this. We can solve it for any given location. So if we plug in s equals 10 meters, into our equation, we get that the tangential component of acceleration is equal to 40 meters per second squared. Okay, so we know what our tangential one is. We plug in our other equation for the normal one. It comes up to be 8 meters per second squared. And therefore, if we wanted to, we could also take the magnitude of the acceleration by squaring those components, adding them, and then taking the square root. So it comes out to be 40.8 meters per second squared is the magnitude of the acceleration. Now I'm gonna I really want you to focus in right here that this chain rule is extremely important and it comes into play a lot of times in dynamics, in solid mechanics. You're going to need to remember that because otherwise you're gonna get stuck some problems like this where it's like I don't know what V dot is. How do I solve this? You don't know V dot by itself, but you can figure out ways to calculate it. So never forget the basic things you learn in calculus. Um, they are extremely helpful, especially when it comes to working with derivatives. Integrals are honestly probably the easiest part of um, dynamics, materials, um, solid mechanics. It's when it comes to these derivatives or these like, basic identities that people tend to forget. So don't you forget. Well, I hope this helps you. I think that's everything. Yes, it is. So I'll see you all next time as we work a few more examples. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.